I want to I want to show you the notes, you know, quickly soon. So I'm going to go to uh, just kind of a one pager on notes and just show you what, what's it all about first. See what we're trying to, and then I'll explain what we're trying to do. So the thing with like notes, like trip notes that people take, usually they're very verbose. They're good, but if we were going to do something commercial, it's very hard to kind of use a reverse somebody's very verbose notes. And if I had like, you know, the people that do notes for optics are me, Emily, and Donald Harris. Uh, if we would all do it our way, they look a lot different and it wouldn't be consistent. So what we did is we came up with a language for notes so that it would be consistent from track to track that we did. And so the language is we, every horse gets a grade to, to rate their performance. Uh, and then we use keywords to describe what impacted that performance, either good or bad, right? Too, too much, I think, again, this is where we use interpretation versus like just describing something. A horse that's three wide could mean different things depending on the track that day. It could be a good trip, it could be a bad trip, you know, it all depends. And what we're trying to do is at a at a glance, we want you to get you to say, okay, good trip, bad trip, trouble. Um, I expect better. You know, get you understanding where the horse potentially is in their form cycle by looking at these notes quickly. And it doesn't matter what track you look at them; they're fairly consistent. And the way we make sure that it's consistent is we evaluate, like you know, next time the horse runs, does he improve? Um, does he based on this note? And does he do better? Does he do worse? And that's what the green and red you'll see a lot about. It kind of talks about what the impact of that note was the next time out. So we're doing that. And it's good for handicappers because they can say, hey, you know, the horse had trouble last time or trouble plus. That's a green keyword. That means the horse is going to run a lot better the next time, but also helps us quality assure our work so that we know the data we're giving you is good because we're just we're checking it out. And we have a system to check it out because we're using our definition of words. You know, I don't like someone says I do great trip notes. I have no idea if you're doing great trip notes because how do you how do you measure it, right? You know, so this is the this is the system we put in place to kind of do that. So you see here, it's like you know when you go on to our notes, you'll see horse gets a grade for the race. You know, A B. Keep it simple, kind of like you know what the clockers use, but it's kind of an evaluation and it takes into consideration, you know. You know the pace, all those all those factors. You know it just doesn't just take in fact take into account the trouble. Uh, the thing is, is we graded A, B, C within that class. So if you're trying to compare a horse that ran for you know maiden special weight for, that ran a B versus a maiden claimer that ran a B, they're different, right? We don't factor in class. That's the only thing we don't factor in. So it's only don't comparing horses so within. So an A performance in a 15 non-2 versus a B performance in a first level allowance, how would you how would you quantify that? Okay, so what was the first one? What was the A? It was an A performance in a 15,000 non one is a 2 versus a B performance in a first level allowance rate. Should I give that 15 non-2? Okay. Yeah, so you're never going to see that in the winners too. Never going to see an A. In fact, the A's are so rare. B, you may see a B plus, and a B plus, oh, okay. B plus typically means the horse probably can make a one to two uh, notch up in class. He probably he could probably be competitive at a, a level above or a level above that, depending on how strong that B. All plus. right, that's all you need to say. That makes complete sense. Okay. Uh, a B is a winning at that level. Use it class to class. What's that? I said use it class to class. Class to class. Absolutely. Yep. Um, the the keywords are like shorthand. You'll see the words up there. You see slog. They all have a definition. Um, when you're in, when you're using this product, let me just show you. See, you know, you use it about four times, and then once you become familiar with uh, with it, you won't need it. But so let's say if you're looking at, let me just pull, pull the fairgrounds up. When's, when's the next fairgrounds run? Tomorrow? Uh, Thursday. Yeah. So go to fairgrounds. And then I, don't use notes uh, to read notes. 
it's all integrated into the grid that I was talking about. So you always want to use the grid. Don't use nodes because this gives you a complete picture because we don't have trip nodes very track. And sometimes, we're, you know, if we're transitioning, like, you know, we don't do like Louisiana Downs and RP and some of these others, right? So we only have notes. Uh, but anyway, if you ever want to know what a keyword means, there's a definition, keyword definition up here. So you click it and it just scroll down and tells you all the keywords in that race. So, you know, what they mean. So you'll use that for about, you know, a week or two, and then you'll figure out what the keywords are, and you probably won't need it. But it's there if you just want to get a definition of what the keywords mean so you understand it. Okay. okay. Um, so the other thing we do, okay, other than, you know, okay, this, these were the keywords that impacted, like the horse had trouble. Plus, you see there, the horse was slow out of the gate, made a move, got into trouble, and closed. That's basically what that this one says. Okay, slow out of the gate, move, and again, we're talking about impact. You know, there's there's races where the horses kind of run around the track. You know, we saw something here, and that's why we documented the way. We have another thing called a projection, right? So we see a race, and we say, okay, this either was a prep. Um, we think this horse might regress. We think this horse may move forward off of this race. We think the horse needs to drop in class, and so that's what you see. These question mark things are performance. We think the horse needs turf. Um, and again, if they're green, that means we're doing something right because those horses are improving the next time. They are regressing the next time because we're about, we're using that keyword and we're doing analysis on it. So our analytics around qualifying our data versus like trying to do it most of if you're trying to say, you know, it, are what we do because, you know, this is qualitative. Are what we're doing working or not working? And this is the way we do it. And it just happens to be a good thing for, for users. <laughs> Kind of works. So that's when you see projections, you know, that, that's what we're doing. Again, they're all defined, uh, but you know, those are the projection things. And then there's extended comments. So like if there's something that we want to really say about a horse or, you know, we want to describe the trouble or something, we'll put it in the extended comment. But you can look, you know, through a race pretty quickly and start getting an assessment where a horse fits, right? So this horse is, you know, this horse obviously is a, you know, an inside trip. You ran a C, which is a subpar effort. They're dropping them, right? So, you know that, that you know that horse probably going to improve with the drop, but you know he obviously can't compete at the maiden special level, right? Um, which one are you talking? About? Which horse? Okay, so so we, I'm just going down. Say it's, yes again. Is the horse screen's about ten seconds behind? Like okay, before, sorry. Like something. So which horse? Which horse are you just talking about? Okay, so say yes again, right? Let me let me get a race that has a little meat to it, so we can. Now here, well, this one just just for context because I've already done picks for this race. Okay, I here have, we go. I have really me... good notes on the Wildcat Indian. What yeah, does me... it say about that? And, and I thought the horse came out of a strong race for the level. Um, do we have positive notes on that horse? Which one? The Wildcat. Yeah. Okay, so so this this horse. This horse was rated a B minus that race, so there was nothing dramatic at least coming out other other than the fact that the horse. Like if you look at this race, so you want to look at horses that probably could run a B or project to run a B, right? So, John, uh, one one thing too, um, the OFR in here does kind of predict a stronger race that last time than this time. Okay. okay. Race strength, yeah. So, you know, and we're kind of going to do a, a read on some of that too. I got a better algorithm for this. But what the OFR does is just tells you uh, what the range of speed figures were needed to win that race. And so you see he comes out of a race that was 63 to 71. Today's race is 47. It's a weaker race, obviously. Yeah. Uh, 754. Um, but anyway, um, so the horse ran, it ran a good race in his first race. Uh, nothing projecting a lot of improvement. Uh, if you look at the race shape, it was slow, slow. So you know, okay. You know, I, I mean, this, this, but so, I mean, if you, if you're evaluating the other two V minuses, uh, I probably read the seven a little bit stronger just based on the fact that that horse was coming out of a maiden special weight and ran a B minus. Uh, it was in the mud, so I don't know if the mud moved them up. Uh, the race shape was kind of collapsing. You see, it was fast early and very slow late. We do race shape, though, I don't do a lot of uh, pace figures and everything like that because. So well, all we do is the race shape. So how did the race kind of come out? So these are the these are early and late race shapes. Does that make sense? The race shape thing, Joe? It's like right, we yeah, have. Yeah. yeah, of course. Yep. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, that, that's a helpful thing. I don't think you know a lot of people think of it, but that's a helpful thing. If the horse was scratched, it'll be in here. So I know you keep good notes at your track, but so if we keep in the past performance, the scratches. So okay. we get a sense of like, why was the horse scratched? And, you know, was he scratched multiple times? Like sometimes you see a horse just can't get a race because of AE or, you know, uh, off the turf. And he's not really on a layoff. You know, he's just trying to find a race. That's a distinction, right? You know, horse is laid up or the horse is just looking for a race. So I think by keeping the scratches in, that helps. And sometimes what I found, I found a big price horse one day. He was he was in somewhere up, up, like a... I don't, He's shipping into New York, an aqueduct, which is not the same as New York, but he was shipping an aqueduct from like another track, and it was Churchill or Fairgrounds, or I forgot where it was. Maybe it was not that, maybe it was Park. And a horse was entered in a stakes race. It was first time starter. I did a stakes race in Park, shipped to New York into a 40 climber and just aired and ate the one because no one knew about the horse. You know what I'm saying? I just bet him, I'm like, they must have think something of this horse if he was entered in a stakes race. And he scratched him out of there. So, uh, oh, okay, I got it. Yeah. Right. Um, so, so that, let me just go back to the notes. So, uh, oh yeah, so in the extended comments, so like in this particular race, you know, there was something here, reluctant to load, also fractious in the gate. Okay, the, the, the horse was acting up at the gate. Second time, this horse was wide and they just didn't push the horse at all, you know, and today they're going to put the blinkers on. So you, you get, I mean, especially if you get to like, the way we do it is New York and California get done all the time. For notes, and then we pick up Fairgrounds, Oaklawn, uh, and Churchill. Churchill and Kentucky get down, get done all the time too. So it's Kentucky, New York, and California, and Woodbine. So those are the tracks we cover all the time for notes. And then we, when then we do seasonal things like Tampa, Gulfstream, uh, and Oaklawn, and a couple others, right? So when you look at a New York, for instance, or a California, let's look at New York that day. You're going to see, you know, there's no gaps in here. And uh, we got a really good guy doing in New York right now. Uh, it's kind of it's kind of green, but we're, that's me. <laughs> so anyway, Emily does California. I do New York. Emily does California and another track, Gulfstream. I do New York and Fair. I used to do Fairgrounds. Now Donald does Fairgrounds. I do uh, New York, Tampa, and Oakland right now. So anyway, Joe. So if I look at this, of course I could filter. There's a bunch of filters. If I just want to look at the last 90 days. You can kind of shrink this down. We put the lifetime out there if you want. Um, if you want to look at, you know, say surface distance, you can do it that way. I mean, there's lots of filters. You can clear them out. You can go one horse at a time. So, you know, you, you got ways to kind of look at this. But the notes are all there. And so you, you kind of look at a horse like this one. And you can kind of get a sense, you know, uh, how this kind of horse you know, got an easy lead last time, got flow, right, um, and uh, won, won easily. You got flow in the last two races. So what this tells me is that this horse has benefited the last two races, um, has benefited from good trips, got got good setups, good flow, you know, like, you know, the good pace flow for this horse. Um, so it's going to get challenged moving up in class here, right, and off a short layoff, so what have you. But but that, you know. Um, how, soon, that, how soon after a race card is drawn is the information populated? Oh, right away. So what happens is the notes are done, you know, like either a day or a week or whatever, you know, either that day or or sometimes, you know, they get updated. So it's all in the database. So as soon as like Ed, you know, as soon as we get uh, Briss to push their raw data to us, we infuse it with our stuff and we push it out. So, you know, you're going to have like fairgrounds. I mean, it's going to be fairgrounds. They do great. You know, they're out so early that I think you probably, yeah, you got up to the 13th. Fairgrounds. Okay. Well, that that's, I mean, for my purposes, that's tremendous because obviously I'm on two-day deadline. So being able to utilize the information based on my deadline is going to be huge for, for my purposes. So that's great. Yeah. Uh, and and so, uh, yeah, I, I just show you a couple examples of the, of, you know, kind of how we, we've used the patterns before. Oakland. Uh, yeah, let me look at notes here. This is notes. You know, we went through this. Uh, this is just some positives, right? Green is positive. B, B plus is potential for horse to move up in you know class. We talked about that. Talk about the projections being interesting and good. 
you know, sometimes, you know, you get a delay, like a horse is, you, you think a horse should stretch out, they don't stretch out, you know, they run them in a sprint again, and then they stretch them out after a poor performance, you know, sometimes you can, you can cash. Negative things are negative, you know, it's red, anything red, positive is green, you know, black is kind of neutral. That's simple as that. Um, see if I got some examples here. Yeah. Um, this was a horse that we thought would improve, uh, but needed a drop. They ran him back in the you know same level, and then when he came back, you know, when he dropped him, he was effective, right? It's just a horse that uh, these are just coming. These are where like this is kind of these crazy maiden races where you know you just got one horse is kind of standing out because I mean he's just the only horse that ran a, a B minus in the race. Um, here's a horse that uh, we thought would improve on a drop. They ran him at a stakes. They ran a good race, but he, his race was even better than it looked. And he came back and won. So, I mean, you get the idea. You're a form cycle guy. I know that. I listen to you. I know, you know, you kind of get this. Um, yeah, right. You know, a bunch of seahorses. No, here, here's a, uh, okay, here's a horse that, uh, had an excuse, but then it was off the turf and they ran it, so it was the wrong surface for the horse, came back, finished by, I never forget this. <laughs> Emily and I, I don't know, we did something with this day. I think we were doing a live thing. It was 29 to one, just got the, at the end, just couldn't get up, but 29 to one. This is kind of another delayed one. You know, the horses were figures in the 60s on turf. Uh, why do we like this horse? Oh, this is the same horse, I think. This is just why that horse was running in the 60s. But anyway, I, I, you know, I, th I don't know. I think you get the idea of form cycle, but having like grades and color keywords just helps you get to things a lot faster. So if you're like, Joe, if you're like, you don't follow California and Emily does California, and you just kind of kind of look at it. And again, you could trust the data because A, we got the right people doing it. B, we're looking at the data and evaluating it and, and figuring out, does it work or not? We're measuring it. Which no one does in racing. You no, know, the one thing I, my pet peeve in racing with all handicappers and all, no one measures anything. There's no measurements going on. And, uh, I think it's important to measure, uh, without getting numbers crazy, just measure to make sure that the quality of the work is there. And we've evaluated this. We've been doing this for nearly four years now in terms of notes and it's worked out very well. And we, we constantly, we're constantly improving. We do quarterly reviews. I look at the things, you know, if we make adjustments, sometimes, you know, uh, Donald or Emily might be doing something better than the rest of us. We we look at theirs. We get their races on video. We start looking at what they're looking at, and we improve. And now we've gotten to the point where we're so kind of it's it's almost interchangeable to some extent. But you, 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 you sometimes you don't even realize who's doing it. It's that close. It's amazing. So. Yeah, I have to I have to open it up sometimes because I'll like look at a note and I'm like, is that me? Did I write that? And I uh, honestly I'll have no idea who it is. There was one the other day that got me. I thought it was my note, and I'm like, maybe it isn't. And it was John. So they're they're pretty uniform. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, and it it takes a while to get that you know get everybody in line thinking the same way and doing it. Yeah, everybody looks at things slightly differently, but there's certain key components that you guys are all looking for. So. And, and I think it's important to me if I see a horse coming in from Woodbine at Fairgrounds that I have, you know, you don't have a genuine assessment. You can watch replays. You can do whatever you want to try to gain knowledge. But the only way to really know what's going on is if you're intimately involved with that circuit. You watch the lead up to the race. You handicapped it. You watch the results. Bingo. That's how you have a genuine Bingo. opinion. And if I don't have a genuine opinion, but I can refer to somebody that does, like that to me is going to be a big help. Bingo. I mean, you hit it. You hit it right there. You know, I mean, you know, people go, oh, I'm going to catch you. I'm going to watch, you know, the last two replays of a horse. It's like you don't have any context. You don't know how the track was playing. You don't know who was hot, who was cold at the time. You know, what what the intention was if you didn't handicap the race. Like, you know, I, you know, they, they wanted speed and this horse didn't get speed. So, you know, that's a real negative. Excuse me. Uh, that's a real negative, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so. You know, that that that's that's very important to, to really understand the circuit and understand the context of what you're dealing with. That makes yeah. the difference. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, I think what we do the best 
uh, in my opinion. Uh, our projections are really good, but our track bias stuff is off the charts because we've got we're so strict on what we think is a bias. But when it is, you cash. You look for those against the biases. Where do I find that? What then? Where do you? Is there anywhere you just find that day to day? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, 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 okay, good. And so I'm going to show because this is good for Ed too. So if you go to Rod, okay, so let's go to Rod for tomorrow. Let's go for Rod for the 10th. And what Rod is shows ratios of the day or optics rod with eyes, meaning like, you know, <laughs> there are rods in your eyes, so they give you insight. You know, they give you the head. That's what the rod was. We had multiple meetings. But anyway, what this does, it takes a little to load because it's loading every horse in every race that's running that day. And you gotta wait because over time it'll get updated with all the races. But if you're just looking at fairgrounds, you just wanna look at that fine. You can search, like say, let's say against the bias I'm looking for, that's the keyword. And I can find, you know, there's two horses running at Aqueduct on the fifth and this, uh, I'm sorry, on the 10th, races five and six that had, were against the bias last time. Easy as that. If you want to look at trouble plus, because that's trouble plus is a big one, you find trouble plus. Okay. Now this this in particular this horse had trouble plus two races back. This is the fairgrounds. Then it looks like uh, you know maybe maybe this horse ran on turf first. I mean right, was the turf horse ran on the dirt or turf horse ran on right? Then do swat. Then and you can what you could do, Joe, right from here you can just open up the plot on that race. If you click there. It'll open up the plot on that race, and uh, and then if you want to go to the grid from there, you can. Just, it's all integrated. Everything is everything's tied together. There's no uh, like there's no like you go here and there. You can just go from from one place to another place quickly. So this horse was let's just go last 90 days. Okay, so this was wide no lead. Okay, so maybe you know this horse had trouble here. Didn't run it. What squat was wide in that race. Now he's getting a drop for Cox. So, let's see. What was the trouble? So where to go? Hold up behind top two finishes in the stretch. Okay, he was blocked. This horse essentially. Okay. So anyway, that's that's how you that's how you if you want to like if to Ed what you were trying to do before I guess you were like. You want, the morning lines are not in for some of these races because it's too early. But if you wanted to say like everything greater than three to one, and you know, uh, let's say you know it's quadrant. Uh, horses wants supposed to be in quadrant one, or something like that. And, and then you want to say contention was low or something, and low speed rating. You know, you you can, you can filter on any of these things. Right. Just you just you put in and if you want to know what the filter things you can use, you just go to help here, Joe. And you can find you know what operands you can use. Yeah? Everyone still with me? Yeah, I'm here. <clears throat> oh. Joe, you get it? No, who's Joe? Okay, Joe wants to drop. It did sound like I heard a the chime about thirty seconds ago. Yeah. Okay. But Ed, do you see you can from here you can you can kind of that report you were looking for? What I want to yeah what, what, no this is this is yeah. dynamite and and in the the top they're empty now but you can type in there to filter right? Yep, you can type in whatever you want. Yeah. So you want to, All right. Like, I want to look at the last you know any anyone that has a, a a green keyword in the last race you know it was three to one the greater than three to one and in quadrant one you know, whatever whatever. Yeah. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do more of these easy filters so you could you know you don't have to do all this. But right now we're working on the new the plot twenty nineteen. So this this will come next. You know, this the grid and, and then this and then you know we we're getting to it. But at least it's there's something there to that you can use to kind of sort and then search on. So see Joe. Coming back. Joe, you back yet? He was so excited he had to jump into the fairgrounds plot for Thursday. <laughs> no, I got, I, got, I got cut off somehow there. I don't know what happened. Yeah, know. So what was it? Where did we lose you? Did you actually see the rod that I was talking about? 
Who you were talking that? about a race on the turf at Fairgrounds, a 25 claimer on Thursday, and saying yes. that somebody had trouble in the race, and I don't know. Well, to answer your question, let's say they wanted to find horses that had and a trouble plus. It's actually open parentheses trouble plus. You gotta look at the keyword. That that's the or you could type in trouble. You get all the different types. But trouble plus is the highest degree of trouble, right? So there was. I was saying there was a couple of horses running in the fair oh, okay. So one was in race two. One one had trouble, but it was the the previous race, and now the horse is a cox horse, and now the horse is being dropped down. That's uh, the son was, of a saint. That's the son of a saint, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that horse and vigilante are dropping out of a much tougher race. Yeah. So you know the horse had trouble in the race before. You know, it was wide. I think it was, I think the note we had was wide. Yeah, wide, no lead in in, in that race. Now now the drop, uh, and then the tough tough kicks in race two had a trouble trip was extra wide. Uh, look, I don't know how good the race was. The blanket means it was a blanket, probably a blanket finish or blanket. There was a blanket second or third. You know, something was blanket at the at the at the wire. Uh, so anyway, but that's a way to find trouble. Uh, any other keyword that you might think is interesting, and again, if you want all the keywords, Joe, if you go back to that, the, the, again, that library where things start, if you go to um, Optics Note Keywords, it'll give you every keyword. And if you want to print this, you know, put this PDF in your in your pocket or have it, you know, right. as keywords, it might be a good thing to do. And you would use that in the rod, you would type in that keyword. Correct. Okay. You can do the same thing. You're looking for certain races, like uh, and we're going to get better at making more filters and taking some of this. This graphics makes it take a long time to load. But if you're looking for things like horses with uh, Q1 and low contention races, you know, you, you could, you know, figure out how to do that. I mean, like three is a real low contention race, so you say like less than or equal to three. Uh, you want the fit to be, you know, greater than or equal to whatever, uh, uh, greater than or equal to four, and you know, maybe the speed rating, uh, certain thing, whatever, you know, low speed. These look like low speed ratings, and then you might, and then you could do by odds, you know, just give me all the horses that fit that over five, you know, greater than or equal to five to one, right? So at least you could. This could be your starting point if you want, and then you know, to look at things. I always, I, you know, I don't want to miss something, especially with the key, especially with notes. So I always look for those keywords. And one of the ones I use too is the green keyword in the last race. So it's an alert. So if you say GW1, Joe, red, that means any horse that had a green keyword in his last race will show up. So those are those are horses that I might want to start and look, pay attention to because I don't want to miss, oh, crap, there was, you know, if I eat the one, he was against the bias last time or, you know, he was moving the turf, and we wanted him to be on turf. In this case, this horse is on dirt, so that's not a that's not useful. Same thing with this one. But you get my gist. Yeah, yeah. I definitely need to, need to use this more often. This is a uh, man. And if you're a contest player, I mean, just the opportunity to sort of make a a short list going into the day of you know potential plays and prices to you know board boards to watch sure i mean and then we have you know we have the same thing i mean you could do this with with this tool but i mean we also have it's a little simpler with uh, scan of the plots you know these are for people because we th you don't get the rod if you don't have notes so what we did is we had scan for people who want to look at uh just the uh, plots and so if you say, hey, look, and I want, you know, I want all the green, I want that green. I don't want the red fits. So I want everything greater than three. Uh, and so it gives me just the ones that fit. Oh, I want the high contention. So every, the, you see the number next to the thing tells you. So anything greater than five or, or greater than or equal to five. So I want high contention rates that have a good fit. And I want speed ratings like over 40 or something like that. There's one race that fits that category, right? And then, and then you could just double click the line and go to that race. And so, right. So, I, I mean, it's got, you could do the same thing in the rod, but I'm just saying, you know, people that don't buy the rod, we still want to give them the capability of doing it. 